Hello everyone and welcome back to Speaking Spurs, me Kieran talking all things Tottenham. Today we're going to be talking about the £150 million investment put into Tottenham. Yes, you heard that right. £150 million being put into Tottenham Hotspur for transfers. That's right. I know it's mental. After all that time that uh, people were saying Enoch out and things like that. Um, those of you that have seen my videos over the past will know that I never really took a, a full stance on Enoch in or Enoch out. And that's just because there's a lot that have been done in the background. I understand a lot about um, business and finance, so I get the restrictions of why they were doing certain things, although I didn't agree with them all. Um, but look, the money's come in. Enoch have finally put their hands in their pocket. And so I'm going to go for a little bit of the statement, which I'm sure you've all heard about, but I'll just do a bit of paraphrasing from it. And then I'll talk about my reasons as to why I think they've decided to invest the money now, as opposed to in the past. And a lot of it is learning lessons um, and just kind of a bit of naivety back in the day. So uh, the club announcement was basically that uh, Tottenham Hotspur Limited agrees £150 million capital increase from majority shareholders Enix Sports Incorporated via the issue of convertible A shares and accompanying warrants. Now that's just a load of corporate mumbo jung jumbo jargon that doesn't really matter because all we need to know is that £150 million has been injected into Tottenham Hotspur Football Club through Enoch. Um, this slightly uh, transpires into a little bit of a higher share within the club. It's very minor, um, but there is a little bit extra in there. So this money provides the club with greater financial flexibility on and off the pitch. Although what we're being told, the majority of it is going to be put into um, buying new players. And also you will see money coming in from players that are sold, players that go out on loan, um, so all great things, even more money. Then obviously we've got the influx of money coming from our league position standing and the top that uh, on top of that is a Champions League position, which means next season there'll be more money in television rights and extra fees for playing in the competition itself against um, top tier teams. So uh, this represents permanent capital into the club and there will be no ongoing interest cost to the club. So 150 million goes in. It doesn't cost us anything to, to repay or anything like that. It's, it's all money straight into the club. Daniel Levy has spoken and said the delivery of a world-class home, the new stadium, was always a key building block in driving diversified revenues to enable us to invest in the teams and support our um support our contributions uh, to consistently compete at the highest level of European football. Uh, capital from Enoch enables us further investment in the club at an important time. Um, so what he basically means by that is they always wanted to build the amazing training facility and the best stadium within the world, certainly within the Premier League, we know that. Um, so what this means for the club, when he talks about the diversified revenues which enable us to move forward he's talking about the fact that uh, the stadium it draws in a variety of people from across the world so on those games where we might be a little bit down on support because it's not as important a game or you know for whatever reason we're not playing well at the time we'll have so many people coming in just because of the quality of the stadium obviously having a player like Son at the club helps because we get a lot of um, South Koreans come whenever they're touring and in London they come and watch so we get a lot of revenue from that anyway but the stadium itself brings in stadium tours um, there's the skywalk which I've done myself and still haven't put the video up of um, NFL boxing we've had rugby concerts with people such as Lady Gaga on Guns and Roses to take place um, it has featured an art gallery, conferences and events and they're just to name a few of the revenue streams that the stadium's got. Obviously you can pay to um, uh, during the games to be in the tunnel which is mirrored one way so you can see what's going on with the players um, in the tunnel. So you know this is a great chance to now invest in players um, to take us on to the next level. Uh, so the reason I think this has happened now and it didn't happen in the past, uh, was partly down to a bit of naivety from Daniel Levy and the board, and also because 
Pochettino overachieved with the players he had. He had a very young squad, um, managed to do impressive things with them with that high intensity pressing football, great on the counter attack. Um, and we essentially overachieved with the players that we had. <coughs> now, what ended up happening was as we overachieved, Daniel Levy was a bit like, well, do you know what? This manager is performing miracles. He's taking these young players onto another level. And what happened with those players? They grew together as a team, continued to perform really well, consistent Champions League positions, um, a couple of uh, second place finishes. Obviously, the last season at White Hart Lane saw us go undefeated. So these are impressive things. We had a Champions League final. Now, the problem with that is all those players over that five-year period that Pochettino was here, every year that goes by, all of those players age another year. So there were a few players like, you know, Jan Vertonghen, Toby Alderweireld, um, Moussa Dembele, uh, players that were ageing, that weren't being, I wouldn't say replaced because they were good enough to be in the first team, but there was no one coming in underneath them because the investment wasn't there. So it was poor investment, poor recruitment, that just meant there were a lot of what I would call alternative players coming in. Instead of what would have been Pochettino's top target, it would have been like the B-grade version. He wanted this. Daniel Levy gave him this because it was 20 to 30 million cheaper per player, which I understand to a certain extent because Pochettino was getting the best out of the squad that he had. So from Levy's point of view, it kind of made sense. But what we ended up seeing in the long run is those B-grade players once they were having to be used on a consistent basis, weren't able to play <coughs> to the demands of what Pochettino wanted, but also the squad that he already had. Some of the players were aging a bit and slowing down, which actually meant that high-intensity pressing football couldn't be maintained for 90 minutes. It's nigh on impossible to do it with a fit squad for 90 minutes. Um, probably the best team I see do it is at Liverpool with their Gagan press. <coughs> So it just wasn't sustainable for those players. And I, I think after Pochettino left, obviously Jose Mourinho immediately came in. He asked for a certain amount of players. That didn't happen. And we've kind of just been in this vicious cycle trying to do what we can. Then obviously Conte comes in um, after you know Nuno goes. That was always going to be a failure in the sense that the club were never going to back him. Um yeah, Conte comes in. He's a very demanding manager. He sets his uh, playing style that he wants the players to have. And I think because he's a top coach, a lot of the players bought into it. He got the best out of some players that had been really struggling at Tottenham. You know, Kane hadn't done the best since um, <coughs> since the upset for England in the summer and the fact that he didn't get the move that he not necessarily wanted, but the move uh, he felt he needed at the time because Tottenham were going backwards. So there was the hangover from that. Then you had... You know, players like Lamella that, you know, he hits form early in the season and gets injured. Um, people that needed to go like Serge Aurier. Um, Lucas Moore is a very indifferent player. <coughs> Winks is obviously still... <coughs> sorry. Winks is obviously still not playing to his full potential. Then you had the fact that Eric Dyer had moved back into centre-back and wasn't working in a two. So the whole system changed. And he's managed to improve certain players like Ben Davies and, and Eric Dyer have been two of our best players since he came in. Obviously, Skip was fantastic and then sustained an injury, which didn't help. But I think Daniel Levy has realised this time around, we're back in the Champions League. We've got the stadium. We've got the training ground. We've now got one of the best managers in world football. Champions League football pretty much <coughs> <coughs> guarantees that Harry Kane will stay for at least one more season. Sonny's obviously won the golden boot. That's a fantastic thing. Then the boys that came in in January in um, Kulisevsky and Benton Kura have been fantastic. Um, and then um, Romero as well was a, a great signing for us. So now is the time to invest. It makes sense. And I think they're finally realising that's something they got to do. So that was that on the £150 million. Yes, I'll say it again. £150 million from Enoch invested in Spurs. So I think <coughs> uh, I think now is the time to get off Daniel Levy's and Enix back, support them and, and see what happens in the coming transfer window. Um, the next video I'm going to do will be on all the transfers and obviously the so far the biggest one to come through is a free transfer. Um, so we're not spending any of that 150 million yet. A free transfer of Fraser Forster. Medical's done. 
I've been told he's 100% going to be a Spurs player, but that won't be made official um, until July the 1st. Um, it will probably be announced before then, but officially won't become a Spurs player until July the 1st when he's officially registered and ready to go. So we'll talk about that in more detail in the next video, but there's lots coming up. Um, talks of Harry Kane and his future, obviously Fraser Forster, um, Dane Scarlett with his new contract, um, a bit on an 18-year-old from Bristol City, Alex Scott. Uh, what else? Brian Hill's future, uh, the future of La Celso, Harry Winks, um, Bastoni, ooh, Kostic. Yeah, quite a few in there. So thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed that little explanation of the investment into the club. Sorry for all the coughing, got a really dry throat and having to be quiet because everybody else is in bed. <coughs> Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave your comments below. And until next time, come on you Spurs.